because that's kind of a strange looking crab. But basically a crab has this big thick body and then the little, you know, hands and feet or whatever, however many they have. But they have that big wide thick body. If you remember, if you look at a brain, this is a picture of a cerebrum of a brain. And the cerebrum is kind of the main body or core of the brain. The cerebrum, you know, has the different parts, frontal, parietal, temporal, and occipital. And then back here would be the other part of the brain, cerebellum and whatnot, different parts like that. But the cerebrum is the core of the brain, just like the crab has something look that looks like the cerebrum, the body of it, which makes up the most mass of it. So I think of galactocerebro side, I think of a cerebrum. So we're thinking of something with a body. Body, that should help you remember crab and crabbe's disease that should uh, give you that away for that so uh, that takes care of that another thing about this disease that I want you to know is that this disease has only neuromuscular symptoms all of the symptoms are going to be involved in only neuromuscular symptoms so what do I mean by that you're going to have, you could have issues with uh, movement and ataxia. You can have vision problems. You can have um, whatever sort of neural problems you can think of. They're all going to be neural issues. Also, over here on histology, these are called globoid cells. They're basically multinucleated cells in neural tissue. They're called globoid cells, and they are, um, they can help you diagnose Crabbe's disease. Again, globoid, it looks like a globe. And a globe looks just like what we were talking about earlier, a cerebrum or a crab's body, because it's really wide and broad based. It's just the body of the thing. These are, look at the shape of these. They're just like a globe or like a cerebrum or like everything we've been talking about, a crab's body. So globoid cell is globe shaped. And I told you, uh, you don't have to know too much of the details about it, but they could just show you that picture and, you know, get, you have to try to figure out what it is. So that can help you remember this is Crabbe's disease. Okay. And it has, now there's one more defining, uh, this is going to become really important when you look at the next disease, metachromatic leukodystrophy. Crabbe's disease if you can remember Mr. Krabs from Spongebob, you usually watched it when you were really young. So this disease should help you. This is the disease that presents, that normally begins to present at less than six months of age. You're young, you're usually six months or less in this disease, in Crabbe's disease. That's going to become really important when we look at the next disease because this next disease, metachromatic leukodystrophy, literally is very very similar to that exact disease as Crabbe except it doesn't have the globoid cells on histology but it has all neuromuscular symptoms again only neuromuscular symptoms but going back to the onset of the disease in this disease you're usually around two years old or maybe a little bit older maybe a little older so, but just think really you're more around two years old in this disease. Now, let's go back to the other one. The onset in the other one was less than six months of age. How did I say that you can kind of keep which one you, it presents way younger and which one it presents when you're a little bit older? Because I said in our mnemonic, Crab A disease, Mr. Krabs from SpongeBob, little kids watch that, like really young kids. So, um, that will help you to remember less than six months of age, okay, versus this one, you're around two years old in metachromatic leukodystrophy. Both of them have very similar symptoms though other than that okay so also in metachromatic leukodystrophy if you just look at the title metachromatic leukodystrophy metachromatic means that you're dealing with kind of meta is like your chromatic means color right like a color spectrum and meta is kind of varying so you're having these various these variants in colors basically of leukodystrophy then you're having issues in the brain leukodystrophy so I think of a ray of colors right metachromatic tells you we're dealing with a kind of a spectrum of colors a ray so this is a deficiency in aryl aryl sulfatase okay so in metachromatic leukodystrophy this is a deficiency in aryl sulfatase a so what are you gonna have a buildup of a buildup of sulfatides that's common sense look at the word aryl sulfatase you're gonna have increased sulfatides when this doesn't work right and I said this presents very similar almost identical to the previous one, which was Crabbe's disease, but the age is how you can distinguish. Both of them only have neuromuscular symptoms, though. Okay, so that takes care of that one. What about Hunter's syndrome? Now, we need to kind of keep all three of these next three diseases in line. Hunter's, Hurler's, and I-cell. 
Okay, for the first one. First of all, these three diseases kind of are on a spectrum, mainly the two to begin with, but I'm going to tell you why I cell also fits in there. Hunter and Hurler's disease are, are basically dealing with buildup of glycus aminoglycans. Okay, and I'm going to show you the differences between the two, but there's some mnemonics that I, these, I didn't come up with these. I, did, I kind of thought through the second one, but I've seen similar ones listed in other resources. This one I was literally taught in med school. So to, this is going to help you distinguish between Hunter's and Hurler syndrome. So first of all, hunters need good eyesight. If you're going to hunt, you need really good eyesight. I'm saying that because there is no corneal clouding that's present. No corneal clouding present in this disease. But let's jump over to Hurler syndrome. In Hurler syndrome, there is, in Hurler syndrome, there is corneal clouding. That is a dis distinguishing characteristic between these two. The fact that there's corneal clouding in Hurler syndrome, but in Hunter syndrome, if you're a hunter, you have to have really good eyesight, so you can't have anything wrong with your eyes, so there is no, no corneal clouding. Another thing I said that is hunting is an aggressive sport. You know, you shoot animals, and so it's, it could be considered aggressive, or that you are a more kind of type A personality for hunting. So in hunting, in Hunter syndrome, they, patients can often present with ADHD-like symptoms. ADHD-like symptoms, or in other cases, you could say that they're more aggressive. Not all the time, but sometimes. And this distinguishes between the two because in Hurler syndrome, you don't have that. But in Hunter syndrome, I just think that hunting is more aggressive. So I, that helps me to remember ADHD-like symptoms and aggressiveness. Okay, so these are two distinguishing characteristics in Hunter syndrome. Now, what is the enzyme that is deficient in Hunter syndrome? So the enzyme that is deficient in Hunter syndrome is going to be, so this is here, it's going to be one called, and sorry if I mispronounce this again, Iduron, Idurinate 2 sulfatase is what's deficient here. So you're going to see that the enzyme in Hurler syndrome is very similar. It's going to have this same word in it, but it's a little bit differently, and I'm going to show you how to distinguish the two. So first of all, I just think of when you have when you're a hunter, you need two things to hunt. Obviously, you have to be there with your gun or whatever, and then the animal has to be there. So there has to be two things present to be able to hunt. So that helps me to kind of remember the two, but that's not too useful for me. I more or less just kind of do my best to remember that this is this um, Idoronate or Idoronate or however you pronounce it. Um, I just try to remember that for these two diseases, and then I'll show you in the next one how you can distinguish the two. So when this thing isn't working, you have a buildup of heparin and, or dermatan sulfate. I just want to remind you that those two things are glycosaminoglycans. So these things will, will not, first of all, these things won't be able to be broken down if this enzyme is not working. And you have a buildup of these things in the lysosomes, and then which are glycosaminoglycans. So there's a lot of ways they can present this, right? They could ask you, instead of even asking you what's being built up, they could say what's, what specific class of thing is being built up. Well, then you know it's glycosaminoglycans. Or they could say, is the thing being built up a protein, a carbohydrate, or a protein? Well, glycosaminoglycans, is, that sounds like glucose, so it's, these are carbohydrates. These are complex carbohydrates that build up. So see all the different ways they can ask you. So I recommend, after you use all these mnemonics for all these different diseases, um, and you see what enzyme is deficient, what's building up, go and research what this specific thing is. What is glucocerebroside? What is glycosaminoglycan? So that way they won't be able to get you with those other types of questions. Okay, so these are some of the kind of defining characteristics for Hunter syndrome. Now I know there's a ton of other symptoms in these diseases, so you'll be thinking, why aren't you talking about all the other stuff? Well, I'm not talking about all the other stuff because they're not defining characteristics for these diseases. I'm trying to help you to recognize when this disease presents because they're all so similar for a lot of these. And the last thing that kind of fits into this is, I don't have a way to remember this, but this is short stature, okay? And these patients could have short stature. So the next one, Hurler syndrome. Now, this is the one I said that presents similar to Hunter's, except it doesn't have, remember, this won't have the ADHD or aggression symptoms. I told you the way to remember that in the previous slide. This will have corneal clouding. I told you the way to remember that in the previous slide. And then the enzyme that's deficient, this helps me a lot. There's an Irish sport called hurling where you use a hurler stick, which is over here. 
look how a hurler stick looks. It kind of goes wide and then it goes narrow. So this is a defective alpha. Now in this situation, you're going to see that Iduronate word again, just like in Hunter syndrome, but in Hurler syndrome, this is alpha L Iduronidase, Iduronidase deficiency. And this again, same thing as before, this is going to cause a buildup of heparin or dermatan sulfate. And remember, those are both just glycosaminoglycans, which are carbohydrates. So that's what's going to happen in this disease. So see, it's very similar. Both of them have that word, and it would be so easy to mess this up and mix this these two up. Especially if they just give you the, they kind of describe a scenario. You don't, you can pretty much ignore all the clinical symptoms once they tell you this is the enzyme that's deficient. Then you're like, well, I know it's either Hurler or Hunter's, but I can't remember. I'm giving you the way to remember. The alpha looks like a Hurler stick. Do you see it goes wide in alpha and then it comes back down and that kind of kind of helps you to begin to get the general okay this is the one that has that alpha type shape the Greek symbol of the alpha okay so this has corneal clouding in this one and then you look at um, some of the other situations you can have short stature again that's why I kind of didn't talk about it before I would maybe even short stature is more kind of in hurler syndrome but um, I, I'm pretty sure that these two diseases, actually, if you read literature, they kind of overlap in a lot of their symptoms. Um, I also want to say that this is where it's going to get a little tricky. I said or eye cell disease over here. In, in Hurler syndrome and in Hunter syndrome, you have something called coarse facial features. I should have written that in the other one. I'm going to go back and add that. In Hunter syndrome... You also have it, coarse, coarse facial features. That is something that is kind of specific to these hunters, hurlers, and eye cell disease. It's in all three of these. And by the way, these diseases are called mucolipidosis diseases. Mucolipidosis diseases. They're kind of that's like a subtype subclassification within the lysosomal storage diseases. So they're classified as that. So both of these have coarse facial features, including eye cell disease. How do you distinguish between Hurler syndrome and eye cell disease? Well, according to all the literature I've read, I'm just going to put the symptoms of eye cell disease right under the word. This presents clinically. Now, I'm talking clinically. This present the presents the exact same as Hurler syndrome. But the difference is in the mechanism and what's actually happening. In eye cell disease, you're deficient. I don't know if you remember learning about mannose 6-phosphate. This is a, spe a specific um basically a substance that in in the Golgi in the Golgi apparatus, this will mark enzymes and when this thing goes onto an enzyme, it tells the enzyme that it needs to be delivered. The enzyme then needs to be delivered. The enzyme needs to be delivered to the lysosome. If you had no mannose 6-phosphate or you had some incorrect form of mannose 6-phosphate, the lysosomal enzymes, I'm talking all of them, the lysosomal enzymes cannot get into the lysosome. So they're just floating around and they end up leaving out um, of the cell intracellular space because the Golgi apparatus, the way it works is that, say this is the cell and this is the Golgi apparatus, you have two distinct pathways from the Golgi. You either can send something to the, ex, basically the extracellular space or a membrane, and on the way to doing that, you go through the lysosome in a lot of situations, or you send or you send um, different proteins into other uh, intracellular organelles. There's kind of two distinct ways to do that in the Golgi apparatus. So it's just, if you can't send it to the lysosome, it's still in that pathway, it's just going to send it right into the extracellular space. So a way to recognize this disease, eye cell disease, to distinguish it, is that all of the enzymes, so you'll have increased uh, lysosomal enzyme concentration. This is the symbol for concentration. Um, in the extracellular space. And then you'll have decreased lysosomal enzyme concentration in the lysosomes, or you could say in the intracellular organelle space. So decrease lysosomal enzyme concentration in lysosomes. And then, um, so that helps you to kind of distinguish that. Now, most people stop there with eye cell disease, but I want to say that it's not enough to know mannose 
uh, the mano 6 phosphate. I want to go a step further and tell you the specific enzyme that is messed up that causes this defective mano 6 phosphate or decreased mano 6 phosphate. And it's a big word, so it's N acetyl glucosal amino. I'm going to write it out because it's a big word. N acetyl. N acetyl. And then the next word is going to be glucose amino. Glucose amino phosphotransferase phosphotransferase this is what is defective this is actually the enzyme that is defective that's causing this mano 6 phosphate m6p for short to be messed up or deficient and then now because that's not present at the Golgi apparatus they can't tag the enzymes to tell the enzymes to go into the lysosome. So they just end up getting excreted into the extracellular space because the, the cell just thinks, oh, this is just a protein that needs to go be sent out into the extracellular space or to the membrane. So you have the increased lysosomal enzymes and therefore now you have all sorts of problems in this disease because you're missing tons of lysosome because you have the enzymes they're just not in the right place okay so that's you have to be really careful because Hurtler syndrome presents so close to eye cell disease Hunter is similar Hunter syndrome is sim similar as well to Hurtler but I told you some of the defining characteristics in Hunters using our two mnemonics Hunters need good eyesight hunting is an aggressive sport so Hunter syndrome you don't have the corneal clouding and then in Hunter syndrome you can have um, you can have the ADHD and aggressive type symptoms. Okay, so those are all of the diseases for lysosome storage diseases or the main ones you could say and I hope this helped you. If it helped you in any sort of way, please like, subscribe and I will see you in another video. Bye guys.